This edition of the Impact Podcast is brought to you by ERI. ERI has a mission to protect people, the planet, and your privacy, and is the largest fully integrated IT and electronics asset disposition provider and cybersecurity-focused hardware destruction company in the United States, and maybe even the world. For more information on how ERI can help your business properly dispose of outdated electronic hardware devices, please visit eridirect.com. Hi, this is John Shigarian. I never could have imagined when we started the Green is Good radio show back in 2006 that it would grow into a big podcast called the Green is Good podcast. And now we've evolved that podcast to the Impact Podcast, which is more inclusive and more diverse than ever before. But we did look back recently at some of our timeless Green is Good interviews and decided to share some of them with you now. So enjoy one of our great Green is Good episodes from our archives. And next week, I'll be back with a fresh and new episode of the Impact Podcast. Thanks again for listening. I'm grateful to all of you. This is John Shigarian. Welcome to Green is Good, raising awareness of each individual's impact on the environment and helping to create a more beautiful and sustainable world. Now, here's John Shigarian, Chairman and CEO of Electronic Recyclers International and Mike Brady. Hey, welcome to today's show of Green is Good. Mike, it's so great to see you. John, it is good to see you. I look forward to doing this show with you each and every week. And what have we got going on today? Well, you know, let's let's tie it into to our lives a little bit. You know, thank you for coming today, Mike. I know you're not feeling your best today. Well, you know, I've been. Uh, it, it's been better. Uh, you know, there's something going around, some kind of bug, and uh, with the heat and everything, boy, you just want to stay cool and get better. Okay, and 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 you know, we all have, you know whatever our mom or our grandma used to give us to make us feel better. Right. Some people's water, orange juice, chicken soup. What's your choice of beverage or drink that, you know, you prescribe to when you're sick? Well, let's see. I Believe it or not, I'll use Pedialyte. Oh, I do okay. that, do water, do Gatorade. But I like, uh, when I, when I start feeling better, I like to, uh, I like to drink tea, actually. Tea. Yeah. Well, I, 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 I think, well, that's great because today we're talking about tea. 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 Okay. You know, today is a tea story, and it's um, it's one of the great brands that both you and I grew up with, and most of our listeners grew up with, Lipton. Tea. Okay, I was going to guess, because when, oh. when I think of tea, the very first, I think they're so, they, they have captured the market, at least uh, in everybody's mind, the first, if you were to play a game show, right. and, okay, right. we're playing Password, right. tea, what would you say? Lipton. There you go. Tissue. Uh, Kleenex. There you go. It's so it's branded. It's an iconic brand, and so uh, you know, with the advent of uh, the organic and sustainability movement, have you tried or started to enjoy other than what we grew up with, which is pretty much straightforward black tea, right? Any of the other flavors that are out there? Yeah, actually, I have. Uh, I, I really like some of the uh, some of the teas that they make because uh, when I drink tea a lot, except if I'm getting over being sick, right? Uh, what I like is in the summertime, nothing beats iced tea. Yeah, yeah, and uh, I like their green teas a lot. Right. Uh, the uh, iced tea mixes with uh, the raspberry is a real favorite. Yeah, and I'm with you. I'm, I've 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 started trying the different teas, and they're really delicious. So today. We have, and this is a first for our show. Okay. It's going international today. Really? We have our guest. Who, his name is uh, Michael Legends. I, I, I hope I'm pronouncing it right, but we're actually getting him on the phone, and he's going to be speaking to us from Paris, France. Wow. And what kind of a time difference have we got there? I think it's about nine hours or so. Well, then we uh, better not keep <laughs> Michael know. waiting. Right. So let's get, let's get the global brand development manager for Lipton. Michael Legends on the phone. Make sure we're saying his name right, and uh, and he's going to share with our listeners today the story of Lipton Tea and the sustainability movement in the Green Revolution. Hey, t- and t- today we're honored to have from Paris. We have Michael Legends. Michael, am I saying your last name right, or you please say it? Uh, you're getting pretty close, uh, Michael Lance. 
Okay, and I'm going to just start st- stop with Mikhail. M- Mikhail, and 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 he's the global brand development manager for Lipton, and it's such an honor to have him with us. First of all, it's the first time our show has ever done an interview internationally. That's number one. But more than that, you've been with Unilever since 1995, and 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 you're the global brand manager for Lipton. But before we get to that, I want to ask you about your past. Because your past is even uh, uh, something that our listeners would love to hear about. You used to be with Ben & Jerry's, the famous Ben & Jerry's ice cream out of Vermont, which is known for their sustainable practices and other things. And tell us what you did there and how you ended up here. And then we'll start talking more about tea after you tell us a little bit about ice cream. Okay. Sounds good, Joel. No, Ben & Jerry's, I indeed, I spent some time there. Um, ben & Jerry's, great company to work for. It was based in Vermont in South Burlington. And yes, you're right. Ben and Jerry's is very well known for its, you know, it's for 30 years. It's been taking a, a you know, a proactive stance on sustainability, um, you know, having a social mission. And I guess when I came to Lipton, I was specifically recruited to bring that kind of thinking to Lipton because Ben and Jerry's has really been leading the way. And I, you know, I've been privileged to firsthand experience that. And the folks at Lipton said, look, you know, we want some of that thinking. We want that. For Lipton, and the best way to do that, of course, is to invite somebody in who's been working on on Ben and Jerry's. Got it. So and that was that, that was that was, and that was before really being green was cool. I mean, they Lipton had the foresight to go grab you from then what was one of very few companies in the United States that were already into sustainability and the fair trade movement. They grabbed you early and started you working on this early. Then is that is that correct? Well, the, the, you know, the real thing is that Lipton started working on this uh, you know, about 15 years ago. Wow. Because we have our own tea estates right. in Kenya and in Tanzania. And those estates have been run on a sustainable basis. We've been practicing sustainable agriculture there for more than 15 years. Wow. So, and so that was the, early, the early. The Alliance certification, which you, know, you and I are going to talk about, that is just a logical next step. Gotcha. Okay, so tell us about Lipton is a brand like Mike and I. We were talking, uh, you know, before we brought you on the on on the on the line here. We were talking about how we grew up with Lipton. It's an iconic brand in the world. It's it's so well known. How you know? Tell us about how big the brand really is. Well, we are basically present in almost every single market. I mean, at last count, it was more than 150 countries around the world. So. Practically and everywhere, and you know you're probably familiar in the U.S. with we've got the tea bags for hot tea, uh, and we've got ready to drink iced tea, and we've got powder tea sticks. You know we've got many different products in in many markets. In terms of, and I don't want to give away any secrets or have you give away any secrets, but in terms of bigness, in terms of sales, how big are Lipton sales? Well, we've got about ten um, percent of the global market. Um, uh, in in sales, so uh, more than three billion euros, so say more than you know, close to four and a half billion dollars. And 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 then what's your next? You know, so you're the bi- you're, you're the biggest tea brand in the whole world. That's right. And you're the head of that. Uh, <laughs> you're the boss. I, I don't claim to manage it all by myself. Okay. You know, the team. <laughs> you're the one guy in charge of making sure that we get tea. I love that. So wait a second now. So now 150 countries. And 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 four and a half billion approximately. So tell us then, fifteen years ago or so, they Lipton starts getting into the sustainability movement. They go and get you, uh, you know, from Ben and Jerry's. So what's the commitment to sustainability? How did it start? And show us and explain to our listeners the evolution of Lipton's sustainability commitment. Okay, well, so fifteen years ago, like I said, we had our own estates. We were practicing sustainable agriculture um, and building a lot of experience. But at the same time, you know, our own estates supply about 10% of our tea globally. So we were doing some really great stuff at our own estates, but we never really talked about it because, you know, it was sort of like a pilot. It was an experiment and it didn't apply to all the tea we sell and and buy, uh, you know, across the world because we also buy from about half a million farms. Uh, third-party suppliers. And so about three years ago, 2006, we basically, we got together with a group of people, um, marketing and supply chain, and we said, right, you know, we've been doing all this work. We've been doing it behind the scenes. 
what can we do next? How can we make this bigger? Because we don't want to just be able to say positive things about our own estates. We want to be able to say good things and give guarantees to our consumers about all the 500,000 farms that we supply tea from. Uh, and at the same time, we want to be able to talk about the good work that we're doing to our consumers, because obviously this is an activity that costs money. And, you know, we're a company. If we spend money on, some, on something, we need to get something out of it. And as a brand, if you can talk about it to consumers, that means that suddenly it becomes an asset and something that is interesting. So what we decided in, um, at the end of 2006 and we went public in 2007 is that we would start working with an independent certification um, a certifier, the Rainforest Alliance, and that we wanted to buy all our tea from sustainable farms. But we made two very practical commitments because, you know, 10% of the world's tea, that is a lot of tea. So we said, first of all, by 2010, uh, we'll have, you know, all our Lipton yellow label in Western Europe for main force line certified farms. And by 2010 also, most of the tea bags that we sell in the U.S. will be from main force line certified estates. By 2015, all Lipton tea bags globally will be from main force line certified estates. And, you know, that's a lot of work. It's a lot of tea. It's a lot of farms to be certified. But that is really our commitment. And why did you choose Rainforest Alliance as opposed to other certification groups? Why did you choose them and, and what makes them stick out and what makes them the best of breed in the certification process? Well, I wouldn't say they're the best in certification. There's a number of good schemes out there. There's, apart from Rainforest Alliance, there's Fair Trade. Okay. Uh, there's uh, a scheme called Oots Certified, who are mostly working in coffee but also branching out in other crops. And I think all these schemes are good, and they're all uh, you know, independently verified, they're credible, um, but they're all slightly different because they come from you know, a different philosophy or they take a different approach. And so depending on the, on the problem that you're trying to solve, you might choose to work with a different partner. Now, for example, at Ben & Jerry's, when I was there, we, Ben & Jerry's chose to work with Fair Trade. Uh, great for Ben & Jerry's, great for the issues that they were trying to tackle. For Lipton... Uh, we decided that Rainforest Alliance was the best possible partner. And that's for a number of reasons. First of all, you know, like I said, we had our own program for 15 years, and we really looked at, you know, sustainable agriculture at farm management, on the people side of a farm, at the, uh, the planet side, the environmental side, and the financial side of running a farm. And the Rainforest Alliance system is very much uh, holistic in the same way. So it looks at sustainable farm management. So it was a very good fit with our own experience so that we were able to continue in the work we'd already done. Also, what's very important for us, Rainforest Lines works with small producers as well as with large estates. To give you an idea, our own estate in, uh, in Kenya uh, employs about 16,000 people. So that is not a small producer. That's the biggest tea estate in the country. At the same time, we source from uh, about 400,000 smallholders in Kenya that have perhaps one or two acres. And you can imagine it's very different working with smallholders or working with, you know, a large company where you source your tea from. And, 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 and okay, so, so you chose the Rainforest Alliance, and, and you know, and we're going to be going to a commercial break in about a minute here. But so your biggest, most of your tea comes from Kenya. That is right. And actually, Kenya is the biggest tea exporter in the world. So right. they export most of the world's tea. But actually, a lot of our tea also comes uh, from India, from Argentina, specifically for the U.S., and we source tea from every other country, every other tea-producing market in the world, including Indonesia, Vietnam, China, you name it. Well, Mikhail, when we come back from the commercial break, we're going to talk about the consumer experience and where the future of tea is going, and we're so appreciative that you've joined us today from Paris on Green is Good. If a little green is good, more is even better. Now, back to Green is Good with John Shigarian and Mike Brady. Welcome back to Green is Good, and we're honored to have Mikhail Leinson on the phone from Paris, France. Mikhail is the global brand manager for Lipton Tea, which has gone green and has been green for a long time, but he's explaining to all the listeners out there why green is good with Lipton Tea. Mikhail, we were just talking now about where the, all the tea comes from and everything, but talk a little bit about our listeners and the consumer experience and, you know, are the consumers aware of Lipton's sustainable practices and the Rainforest Alliance Certified Seal and what that really means? 
I think so far, you know, they haven't, they're not aware of it because we haven't talked much about it, but that's going to change or it has already changed. And we've actually, we started last year in a number of U European markets where we've communicated extensively about it, um, you know, advertising, uh, web, PR, um, and now that's actually, that's coming to the U.S. as well. And because we want to explain to consumers what it is that we're doing, we think it's important that consumers understand. And of course, you know, let's be, let's be fair about it. We also want them to appreciate the work that Lipton is doing so that hopefully they'll buy more Lipton tea. Because that is, of course, an important part of sustainability as well. People, planet, profit. Well, we talk about that a lot. So, why don't you talk? Why don't you share with our listeners, Mikhail, what that means to Lipton in terms of people, planet, and profits, and and why this what you're doing there means what that means to their bottom line besides their brand. Well, for you mean our bottom line, and what we're doing, and also in terms of people and planet. What oh, everything. I mean, hit hit it all. Explain how the how 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 you Lipton's you know Lipton's initiatives that you're running actually hit all three of those of the three P's. Gotcha. So let me give you some practical examples. Sure. So for example, um, at our tea estate in Kenya, uh, we employ about uh, sixteen thousand people. Um, those people are being they've they've got by rare local standards they've got good wages but very importantly they also they live on the estates because you know the estate is quite far from the nearest cities so we provide housing to our to our employees as well as their family we make sure of course there's clean drinking water uh, there are schools on the estate that provide education to the kids uh, there's a hospital so basically Every employee at, uh, at Lipton's uh, tea farm in Kenya gets free health care. Now, that's something, I think, which the U.S. doesn't even have yet. So no. our employees do have that. Wow. Um, so that, that's some of the social side. Right. On the environmental side, yep. um, Kenya has a, a huge deforestation problem. Mm. Um, and so we've been planting trees, local you know, indigenous trees on our own estate. We've been giving away trees to, uh, to neighboring communities, to schools. We planted and given away around 700,000 trees as part of the reforestation program. We have a sanctuary, a monkey sanctuary. There's wildlife around the estates. We make sure that we keep um, areas set aside specifically for, for wildlife. Uh, and so there's a whole, you know, number of activities uh, in terms of protecting the environment. Another one I should really mention is that uh, we generate most of our own electricity there uh, through hydropower, so green energy. Wow. Um, and then, of course, there's the, there's the financial side. Right. Um, which for us as a company means that, obviously, we hope that consumers understand what it is that we're doing and that they buy our tea and that they appreciate it, what it is that we're doing. It's also important, though, for the people, for the farmers the, who supply us with their tea, because we buy about 90% of our tea from third-party suppliers, and a lot of them, about 400,000, 500,000, are small farmers with perhaps one or two acres. Um, they are being trained, and, and I was actually in Kenya in, uh, in March, and we've been, we've been training them in how to farm sustainably, and that's part of their commitment. You know, they need to become Rainforest Land certified as well. I spoke to one of these farmers in Kenya, you know, a smallholder that supplies us with tea, and he'd been part of the training program, so he'd been sharing sustainable agriculture practices and techniques with him. Um, and he was thrilled because he saw his yield, so the production from his tea field, go up by 60% versus the year before. And that was thanks to, you know, smarter farming techniques, sustainable farming techniques. So not only was he proud that he was looking after the environment near his farm, um, but he also saw a direct financial benefit. And I think that's really important because in the end, you know, that's the, that, that's the, the, the profit side of people, planet, profit. So this was, this was a third-party farmer in Kenya. Now you're training and offering the same training to all of your third-party farmers too, right? Yes, that's what we're trying to do. And we do that in partnership uh, with other organizations, but we, we make our knowledge and our experience available. We have people whose job it is to specifically go out and work with our suppliers and make sure that the experience that we've built up over the past 15 years, that we share that with our suppliers so they can become Rainforest Line certified as well. Well, Mikhail, you know, I know tonight you're sitting in Paris, but you've worked in the United States and you travel the world. One thing our listeners 
like to know is the sustainability movement in the green revolution. Can you do, can you educate them a little bit to the compare and contrast of Europe versus North America versus Asia? Which, which continents are really excited about the movement and which continents are yet to adopt, but are going to be coming on board? Well, I think to be fair, I think it's converging. I think it's fair to say that, you know, about three years ago, Europe was probably more concerned about these kind of issues. Uh, you know, the fair trade movement was quite strong. Organic picked up in Europe before it started in, in the U.S. big time. Um, but I think that has changed quite dramatically in the past three years. And if you see, you know, large companies like Walmart in the U.S. making a move, uh, you know that, you know, you've reached the tipping point. Same is still true in Europe. I think it's very much on the agenda. Um, Asia... I guess in you know a lot of these Asian countries are still developing, so they have other concerns right. uh, on their plate as consumers. At the same time, I think that's changing rapidly as well because if you see China, um, where they've got huge pollution issues, I think more and more Chinese consumers are getting aware of you know how this impacts their personal life as well, hmm. if only because they're confronted with pollution because of the way that, you know, businesses operate in a country. So I think those markets are catching up very rapidly. I'm speaking to somebody who just been to Brazil recently, and he said Brazil is really on top of this, and that's something that happened in the last year. Wow. Well, you know, Mikhail, I, I can't help but go back to what you said about training that Kenyan farmer in sustainable practices. Now, uh, you think of Kenya, that too is a developing nation. When we talk about countries that are developing, uh, sometimes people can say, well, you know, it's it's all well and good for developed nations to preach from the bully pulpit, if you will, about sustainability to countries that are coming up. But when I think back to what you said about that 60% yield increase for that farmer, by learning sustainable farming techniques. I'm thinking there is a real profit to be made and maybe a better leap ahead for some of these developing countries if we put the sustainability movement in the forefront. Absolutely. Um, you know, there, there, there are real benefits for farmers um, to switch to better practices and to use better ma- methods. And, you know, and it does, like I said, it, should, it usually it works both on the financial side as well as on the environmental side. So, it's good on, on both counts. So, uh, you know, so if what you say is really correct, which which is exciting to hear that there's a converging of the movement and the countries like Asia and North America are, are now quickly catching up to what Europe was on to years ago, then that's really you, it's really great to be green right now. And it's good to be green in terms of being uh, a brand development manager for an iconic brand like Lipton. Well, yes, because consumers are more and more interested in this, you know, and when we when we talk to consumers, when we do surveys, we found that, you know, about two thirds of consumers care about these things and they would like to be able to buy products uh, from brands and companies that do the right thing. Uh, Now, perhaps they're not always doing that yet. But there, that's, you know, there are certain obstacles, like if you can't buy, you know, a certified or responsible product in your local shop then obviously you won't do that. Or if you have to pay a premium, not everybody is willing to do that. The good thing is that, you know, what Lipton aims to do is to bring it on our existing range, which, as you know, is very widespread, and we're not going to charge the consumer a premium for it. So we're making it relatively easy, and we really expect consumers to respond very positively to that. So they're getting a good value. They're not paying a premium for uh, uh, the high-quality tea that you're putting out. And then, then, then also share with our listeners then, what is, where does the money go? What are they helping to support when they buy Lipton tea that has the Rainforest Alliance certified seal? What, what really happens then? Well, it gives them a, a guarantee about how this tea was produced. And, you know, in the end, you could say that every cup of tea is, is going to be a step towards a better life for the tea farmers, for their families, and for the environment. That is wonderful. And they're not paying a premium, you're saying. But when they buy Lipton tea, the price is not higher then. No. That's, we that, are not charging consumers more. That but is of great. Course, what we're doing is we've committed uh, to only buy tea from the certified farms. So the consumer buying Rainforest Light certified Lipton, we buying from those farms, we are providing you know, a financial reward to farms that have demonstrated through getting the Rainforest Line certification 
that they are really looking after the people as well as the environment. That's amazing. And so now the consumers that are our listeners want to know then what's coming. What's coming later this summer and fall and what's coming in the future for Lipton? What other brands are you rolling out and what other flavors are you rolling out that we can all get excited about? Yeah. Well, the first thing uh, that's coming, uh, the first thing that started in the U.S. is our, uh, some of our green tea products, uh, tea bags. So those are on the market. They're certified. What's coming right now, which I think is very important, because like I said, we want to explain to consumers what it is that we're doing, is that we've partnered up with National Geographic Global Media. They're um, National Geographic, I'm sure you're familiar with. Sure. Um, and we've created with them, or they have created really, you know, specific content about to explain to consumers what it is, what, what we're doing. And basically, they came to our tea estate in Kenya um, they had full access, they videoed, they took photographs, etc. And so there's a huge, there's a wealth of material available on the National Geographic website. Uh, of course, we also link to that from the, from the Lipton website. There will be on the National Geographic uh, TV channel, there will be attention paid to this. And so that's really to help consumers, you know, to, to explain to consumers what it is that we're doing. So nationalgeographic.com slash Lipton Sustainability and then T, a little pun with T-E-A, not with T-Y. Okay. If you just Google Lipton and National Geographic, consumers can see for themselves and actually make a little trip to a, a Rainforest Lions certified tea estate. Wow. And what other brands are coming out besides the green teas? And um, later this, you know, right now, what else, is, what else do you have in the works that's, that our listeners can get real excited about? Well, there's uh, Pure Leaf, which is a, a ready-to-drink bottle tea. Mm. Uh, which it's, I think it became available in U.S. stores uh, earlier in June, so about a month ago. So that's there. And we basically, we've got the whole range coming. You know, by 2010, uh, all of Lipton tea bags um, will be from Rainforest Line certified farms and all of our purely ready-to-drink tea as well. And That's so, going to happen pretty soon, within the next, you know, year and a half. So, you know, right now, where is your biggest market for selling these? And where, when you, when you, when you uh, dream about what markets you haven't penetrated enough of yet, where is the future for you in terms of getting your global brand developed even more? Um, well, the U.S. is our biggest market. Okay. Uh, number two market is Japan. Ah. Um, and so in both those markets, we are present with Rainforest Land Certified Tea. Um, another big market is France, um, which we've been working with Rainforest Lines for about a year. I would really like to go into Russia and Poland, which are other important markets for us. And we haven't started there yet with Rainforest Lines Certified Tea, but we will because, you know, those countries are included in our commitment um, that all our tea bags will be certified. That, that is just amazing. So, um, and, and have you been to Russia before? And do you feel that that, that community and that, that country would be welcome, welcome your products with open arms? Lipton is a, is, is, a, is a big brand and it's growing very rapidly. And like I said, in, in a lot of these uh, emerging markets that used to be less concerned about the environment and sustainability, I think they're getting more and more concerned. And they've seen you know, partly through the you know, the economic crisis, what happens when you act irresponsibly? And this is a chance to show that we can act responsibly so, uh, so, and actually do something good. Mikhail, and we have about a minute left, and we always like our, 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 our guests to leave our listeners with a couple of green tips. Uh, so do you have, for b- both business owners or consumers, you have one or two or three favorite green tips you want to share with our listeners as we say g- goodbye and good night? Yeah, I have a really good and a very practical one for your listeners. Because we all know, you know, carbon emissions. And of course, you know, if you make tea, there's carbon emission as well. Now, 80% of those carbon emissions associated with having a cup of tea are created by the consumer brewing the water. And typically they brew or they, they boil too much water. So if you fill up a kettle to make a cup of tea, make sure you fill up just the right amount. That way your water will boil quicker, you will use much less energy, and you uh, have a much smaller carbon footprint. And that's a small difference that everybody can make without sac- making any sacrifice. And that's, then that's a perfect way to end today. And, Mikhail, we are so honored that you joined us from Paris. We're going to have you come back in a year or so and tell us more what's happened with Lipton Tea. And you are just another living great example with your great brand, Lipton, why green is good. This edition of the Impact Podcast is brought to you by Engage. 
Engage is a digital booking platform revolutionizing the talent booking industry. With thousands of athletes, celebrities, entrepreneurs, and business leaders, Engage is the go-to spot for booking talent, for speeches, custom experiences, live streams, and much more. For more information on Engage or to book talent today, visit letsengage.com. Let's Engage.